Hey students, this is Mr. Boyd with a follow-up lesson to factoring. So sometimes you need to have you need to use more than one factoring strategy to complete a problem. Most commonly, we're going to have to factor out a GCF first. So let's take a look at a few examples here. So when I look at this trinomial here, I notice that all of them share a factor of five. So I want to factor out that GCF first. So that's going to leave me with n squared plus 6n plus 8 in the parentheses because 5 times this equals this. Well, now I want to see if I can factor the trinomial that's left in the parentheses. And if I do, I will have 5 times the product of two binomials. Okay? So let's use the method that we've already done here. Let's take that n squared plus 6n plus 8. Let's draw our box. And I'll put my squared term in the upper left, and I'll put my constant in the lower right. And then I'll find my a times c, or a times ax squared times c, and that's going to give me 8n squared. And then, of course, my middle term goes at the bottom. Okay. All right, so let's see here. What two numbers multiply to give me 8 and add to give me 6? Well, that would be 2n and 4n. So we'll place those in our other two boxes. And then we'll work backwards or factor out our GCFs. Well, if I look at this bottom row first, it kind of makes things a little simpler. So if I factor out the common factor here, we can see that 4 is the greatest common factor in the bottom. And then if I work across backwards again, I know 4 times 2 is going to be 8. Okay, so the rest should be fairly straightforward. n squared would have to be n times n. So our two factors are, our three factors actually are 5, n plus 2, and n plus 4. These are the three factors of this polynomial. Okay? move on to example number two. Example number two, what is the GCF here? Well, it takes a little investigation, but six is actually the GCF for this polynomial. Well, if we factor out a GCF, six p squared divided by six would leave us with a p squared, or if we think backwards, six times what would be six p squared? Okay, minus 60 divided by six is 10 p. And then 150 divided by 6 happens to be 25. And the way I think about that is it takes 6 quarters to make $1.50. Okay? All right. Now let's see if we can come up with a, see if we can factor what's left inside this set of parentheses right here. So let me draw our box again. My squared term up in the top left, my constant in the bottom right, and the magic number here is 25p squared, and my middle term is negative 10p. So let's see, what two numbers multiply to give me a positive 25, add to give me a negative 10? Well, I believe that's going to be negative 5 times negative 5. Okay. Again, let's start on this bottom row instead of starting up top. So I see I've, this shares a negative 5 and a 5. And since this front term is negative, I'm going to pull the negative out. And so negative 5 times negative 5 would give me 25. And then, of course, P times p would give me p to the second power. Okay, so I see that my other two factors are p minus 5 times p minus 5. And an alternate way to, to write that that you have probably seen would be 6 times p minus 5 to the second power. Okay, let's go on to number 3. 
So what would be the GCF for this one? Well, it looks like maybe negative 2 would factor into all these. These are all evens. The leading coefficient is negative, so I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and factor out that negative sign. That's going to leave me with an n squared plus 3n plus 2. Okay. And again, let's see if we can factor this into two binomials. Now, if I can't find a number that multiplies to give me 2 and adds to give me 3, then this cannot be factored any further. But I believe you guys are already catching on enough. You know what numbers I'm looking at here. So n squared and 2. So I'm looking for, again, 2n squared. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 2, but add to give me 3. Okay? So let's see here. I believe that's going to be 1n and 2n. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Okay, so let's start in this bottom again. I see this bottom row shares a common factor of 2. And 2 times 1 would have to give me this 2 in the bottom right. And, of course, n squared is just n times n. So this would be n plus 1, n plus 2. Again, there's no reason that I wrote this in this particular order. I just like to write the smaller and then the larger. It really doesn't matter because multiplication is commutative. All right, number four. Let's see. I'm not sure if 4 goes into 52. I know it goes into 160. I do know 2 goes into all these, so let's just start with 2 and see what happens. So if I factor out a 2, that would leave me with a 2r squared plus 26r plus 80. And now I see that two, I can divide out a 2 again or factor out a 2. And that would leave me with r squared. 26 divided by 2 would be a 13r. And if I do 80 divided by 2, because I'm factoring out another 2, that would leave me with 40 in the parentheses. Okay, so let's see. 2 times 2. Let's go ahead and put that back together. 4 actually does go into 52 13 times. Okay, and we have an r squared. Uh, with plus 13r, plus 40 in the parentheses. Now let's see if we can factor this into two binomials. Okay, so let me draw my box. Put my r squared in the top left, put my 40 in the bottom right. Let's see, the magic number is 40r squared. And it needs to add up to, so a product of 40r squared needs to add up to 13r. I'm not sure. Let me list the factors of 40 and see if we can come up with this. Okay, so let's see. 1 times 40, but that adds up to 41. 2 times um, 20, but that adds up to 22. 3 times, oh, 3 doesn't go in. 4 times 10. That adds up to 14. How about 5 times 8? And that adds up to 13. Okay, those are the numbers I'm looking for. Put my 5R here and my 8R here. Again, it doesn't matter which box you put them in. Okay, I see this bottom row shares a factor of 8. And so 8 times 5 would give me 40. Check it. Okay, 5 and 40. Yeah, they both share a 5. And, of course, this is r times r, because we have an r squared here. And so our two factors are, two remaining factors are r plus 5 and r plus 8. So we have three factors for this one. Again, we have a 4 as the first factor. We have an r plus 5 as the second factor. And an r plus 8 as the third factor. Let's jump on down here to number five and pick up my pink pen. Okay, I can see that each of these are divisible by five because five, 30 ends in a zero, 45 ends in a five, 
So I can see that 5 is one of my factors, but I also see I've got a b to the third, a b to the second, and a b. So I always pick the variable with the smallest exponent. Remember, this is a b to the first power. And so let's see what we have in the parentheses after we factor out 5b. Well, that would leave me with a b squared minus 5 times 6 is 30. And I would have a b plus 5 times 9 is 45. Okay, so let's see if we can factor this remaining uh, part in the parentheses into a couple of binomials. So here I'll put my b squared up here, put my 9 down here. Okay, my magic number is 9b squared. So I need a product of 9b squared. I need a sum of negative 6b. This is my middle term. So these two diagonals have to add up to negative 6b. So let's see, what would work there? I believe a negative 3b and a negative 3b would give me a negative 6 this way and would also give me a product of positive 9b squared. So there's my numbers. All right, what, what's the common factor on this bottom row? going to be a negative 3, and a negative 3 times a negative 3 is going to give me a positive 9. Okay, this would be b times b, and we can check it real quick. b times b is b squared. b times negative 3 is a negative 3, 3b. b times negative 3 is a negative 3b, and negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. So here we can see our two factors are b minus 3 and b minus 3, or 5b times b minus 3 quantity squared. Okay? All right, one more example, guys, and we'll be finished here. This actually should be an n, not a v. It's a typo. Okay, so the greatest common factor here is going to be 4n. Again, picking that lowest exponent variable. Um, 4 does actually go into 108. I can tell because it ends in an 8. Um, and the way you tell if a 4 divides into a number, if it will divide into the last two digits, then it will divide into the entire number. doesn't work with every one of them, but it works with the uh, 4s. Okay, so if we divide out a 4n, that would leave us with an n squared. Plus a 12n. 4 times 12 is 48. And then... If you, fact, if you go ahead and divide 108 by 4, that actually ends up being 27. So let's draw our box. I'll put my n squared in the top left, my 27 in the bottom. What two numbers multiply to give me 27n squared? It's my magic number, but they need to add up to 12. Well, the only two numbers that fit the bill there are 3 and 9. Check it. 3n plus 9n is 12n. 3n times 9n is 27n squared. Again, let's work this bottom row first. Common factor down here is a 3. 3 times 9 is 27. Okay, we're almost there. I believe this is going to be n times n. Let's check it. n times 9 would give me 9n. Uh, 3 times n would give me 3n, and of course we've got the 27 and the n squared. So our three factors are, 4n is my first factor, n plus 3 is my second factor, and n plus 9 is my third factor. Again, these factors can be rearranged because this is multiplication. Most commonly, though, we put this 4n out front and then the two binomials afterwards. Okay? All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching the video. Um, as always, click the subscribe button. And if you click the bell, you'll get notifications when I put out new videos. Have a good day.